I'm ready to start the draw. I've got my bottom panel cut to size, planed up, because we've already covered panel making in the previous sections. So here we go. We've, what I want to do is explain what I've got here first. So two ends or two sides, a front and a back, something like this. We're gonna just, I'm gonna make this the fastest dovetails you've ever done, just simply because it's the common dovetail. It's the one through dovetail, twin dovetails, nothing fancy. And then this is going to be my, my draw front, which is going to be overlaid over the, the draw once it's made. So it's really four basic dovetails, one to each corner, and then a groove all the way on the inside rim at the bottom, and that's going to take that panel. And this is going to be the draw front, which is simply going to be screwed to the front once the box is made. So that's where we're going. So first of all, we'll set these two pieces out of the way and bring these together. Now I've got mine marked. I have a habit of marking things with a triangle that tells me where I'm going to place these in the hole. So the first thing I want you to see is that I make my, my drawers dead to size with no margin. So the draw is the exact width of the opening plus maybe a hair more. So this will actually fit into the opening like that. It's tight, it won't go all the way in. And the same with the overall length once I make the length. Now these are not yet finally fitted, but they're just a, about mm, maybe a 30 second overall in length. And I'm going to make my draw to that because inevitably when you make these drawers, they always end up a fraction undersized. So we're gonna start with these two pieces, place them together, flush the top and bottom and put them in the vise. The first thing I'm going to do is lay out my dovetail. So I'm coming down from the top, quarter of an inch. This is three inch material, by the way, so and then up from the bottom quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna find the center, which is one and a half. I'm going an eighth of an inch either side of that center line. And that will give me quarter inch pins. So I'm gonna square these across. I've got both together here. And this, I think you're going to enjoy. So those are my dovetails. I turn this one around end for end so I can use the same layout that I just had on the opposite end. So I don't have too much layout to do. Use the same markings because they're going to come out the same that way. Now what you should do, of course, is check that you have laid them out properly but I'm pretty confident that I've got this right. So now I've got the position for all my dovetails. It's just a question of marking them up for the dovetails. You can do them all now, or you can do one corner. I'm gonna focus on one corner because I want to show you how I'm going to make one corner. If I turn this back around, I've still got my triangle there. Let me show you what I mean by checking. You can take this now and turn it in the opposite direction. And if the lines line up as they do, I think, that means you've got the dovetail centered. So let's go ahead and start with the dovetail. Now, with the thickness of this dovetail, I go back to my triangles on this piece. So this, I have the triangle on here. And this means, for me, this means this is the back of the, of the drawer and this is the front of the drawer. So I'm going to be focusing on which one. I can focus on either one. Let me go ahead and do this one. So this is where my dovetail is going to go. So I bring this into play here and I just flush the end with my fingertip and make a pencil line. I'm going with a pencil line. I've sharpened up my pencils. I go onto this one exactly the same and make a pencil line. I'm gonna take 
this all the way around onto the outside face because I'm going to be cutting from the outside face to the inside. So this is just getting me in the ballpark. This is just purely a visual for now to help me know where to start and stop my cuts. So I'm going all the way around this one, even though I probably will never use the inside marking. But it gets me to where I want to be. So the, this is my dovetail piece. I've got my markings. I know exactly where that's going. I need a, a dovetail template. And I'll lay out for the first dovetail. And this should go very quickly for you. We'll see, I'm not going to rush myself. I'm just working progressively and steadily. And this would probably be the pace that I would normally work at if I was making a piece for a customer. I've got my dovetails on. I cut from the outside into the inside. That way, if there are any broken fibers on the dovetails, of course, I'm using a push stroke saw as well then those fibers will be on the waist side that will never be seen. Cut on the outside of your lines. Get square across and then follow the rake of your dovetail and stop a fraction above your line. Cut to your line. Oak is a coarse grained wood. So this next step, I'm just going to take my square, I'm going to put my dovetail end, the pin end onto here, and I'm just going to flush this with my fingertips on the end of that piece. And that gives me the exact position, the thickness of that adjacent piece onto here. Now that does look like one of my saw curves went slightly beyond my line. I think. I can go all across these inside ones because it's never going to be seen. Right, just nuzzle the teeth right up against your knife wall. Gently. And let the saw float into the cut. No rigid bulldogging. This is just the weight of your hand. Clear cut through. I'm going to go with my three quarter inch chisel. Make sure you're locked in the vise. I'm just going to pair cut these end fibers just a little bit. Oops. Okay, I'm going to chisel out that midsection now. So I've got my knife wall there. And I'm just going to stay away from my knife wall, bevel down like this. And that's going to loosen those fibers and I can flick that out with my finger and I can see the knife wall, but I'm going to chop about half a millimeter away from my line, away from my knife wall. That's consolidating the fibers within the knife wall. And now I'm going right onto my knife wall again. At least I think I am. So that won't move the knife wall, hopefully. Nope, 
It's not letting me do that. Okay. Now I can chisel a little bit away from the wall. And now I'm going to go halfway through from this one side, tight into the corner, right on the knife wall. Great. So we're not really, I'm at, that's halfway through now. So I'm already halfway through and I've left this outside to keep it lying on the bench so that the fibers are not stressed. Same on this side, a little bit away from your knife wall, bevel down, just chisel and that will split the fibers near to the knife wall. Then you can flick it out with your fingernail. Half a mil away. And I can see that bevel, even with the gentle tapping, I can see it moving, nudging the chisel towards that definitive knife wall line. So it's worth doing this in, as a matter of course in your woodworking, it's so worth it. This will get me close to cutting through. So we got four of these to do. So that's my pin recess done, my dovetails cut, little pair cutting in the inside corner. And now we're going to do this one. Let's put the plane in. I don't always do this, but it's good to keep the practice alive. I think. So I'm lining up, what am I lining up? I'm lining up the end, yes, but I'm also lining up the very inside corner, the edges, getting everything close to. Now you can go with a knife on hardwood or you can go with the pencil, which is up to you. If you go with the pencil, usually the pencil tip won't get you as tight as you might want to be. So there's my knife wall on end grain. Oh, that's done. Square down. We've got a depth line that we're working to, which was the thickness of the front piece on that particular corner. Stand my plane up the way it should be. Through cut just to clear out the debris from the teeth. Just above your line. you can use the rebate that we did on the carcass we, you can do that on this as well if you want to I'm going to bring my tailpiece in feel for that end grain make sure I'm make working to the flush element there 
and I'm pulling a knife wall in between the saw curve. Stand up onto the end. Oh no, I'm too soon here. We've got to take this line and transfer it to the corner. Getting ahead of myself there. There, that will give me the squareness. I want it dead square across these. Into the vise. This is purely for safety now and security because we're pushing with hand pressure, arm pressure, or we're going to tap as well. Turn over. I'm going to go with a slightly wider chisel. It will take a one inch chisel. That gives me a long resistance wall to chop against. Not too heavily, because this dovetail will be one and one eighth. When I lift up with the chisel the way I do, it will only pull the fibers up down to the depth of the vertical cut that I did. So that gets me prepared for when I do the next chop cut down. Onto the bench top, just for solidity. You wouldn't chop this in the vise, it's not very practical. I can go so far with my one inch chisel. This goes so fast in thin stock. Even in oak, it goes very quickly. Again, as I said before, this is probably my normal working pace. This is the pace that I would work at in the everyday of my woodworking. As we get through to the center point here where the two start to meet, you'll feel the resistance uh, on the breakthrough point gets less and less. So just be conscious of that. And you won't have any surprises. Very close. Very, very close now. Could be close to breaking through here now. Maybe.
So this part is really just taking out those fibers of wood that stop the bevel of the chisel from taking the cutting edge deeper really. I like these conversations I can have with you because these are the unexplained elements of woodworking that nobody really talks about. So I'm going with my narrower chisel, the three quarter inch now. Chisel at the angle of the dovetail, the rake of the dovetail. Midsection. Opposite side. And I think this is going to be it. Hmm. This is hanging on. So close. I really thought that was it because these are just about wiggling now. Be careful if you pair cutting like I'm doing now because that uh, outer edge can break away when you, I, I probably only have about a sixteenth of an inch of wood retaining the position of that waste wood. So I'm going tight into the corner. Chisel out these inside fibers. Clean up the corners. And the nice thing about chiseling from both sides the way we did and leaving the outside rim on the, the dovetails is you've got no torn fibers in the base of your dovetail, which I love. And this then presses together with your thumbs. And that's one dovetail done and three left to go. I think that was nice. It was a nice dovetail, nice, good, enjoyable period.
Once you've got your drawer dovetailed, you feel pretty good about yourself. Uh, one thing I want to do now is I want to run a groove all the way along, along the inside of the bottom edge of the drawer. So I'm coming up from the bottom where the groove starts, a quarter inch groove that's going to be 3 16 deep. And that will take my panel, but I will be doing exactly the same as I did on the door. I'm gonna put that little rebate all around, a lot along the underside, that one eighth by three quarter inch rebate. So I'm gonna do that. And that will make that three eighths panel fit into the groove, hopefully. So I've got everything close to size. I've tried this in the opening and I'm, I'm pretty close to go between the two walls. I've got my height is still tight in the middle so I've got some fitting to do but I'm close enough for me to run the groove one of the things I want you to do is run a pencil line I already did this one run a pencil line along the inside edge any distance you want from the bottom edge but before you do make sure you've planed every surface level all the way around Make sure it's straight, everything like that. And that means you can run the fence of your plow plane up against that bottom edge. And when you run the quarter inch groove, all of the grooves will align perfectly. So let me go ahead and cut a couple of grooves for you. But the pencil line now will guide me, so I'll be looking for that, making sure I look for it so I get it on the inside face, not the outside face. All of these things make a huge difference. I'm looking for grain direction. There's not much I can do if it's the wrong way. So I'm gonna have one short clamp and one long one to take the longer piece. So if I put this this way, I've got to get the clamp out of the way as well so the plow plane doesn't snag on it. And because my vise is the size it is, I can take both the clamp heads in the vise when I flip this over like this. So I cinch it tight on the uh, workpiece. Make sure it clears your vise, that's important. And now I'm gonna press down here, cinch tight here, and then lock it in the vise, and hopefully that will give me the rigidity I want. So I've set the side of my cutter half an inch from the fence. I usually just take a chisel, like if you've got a, a half inch chisel, just drop that between the fence and the blade. And then this one I've set 3 16 deep, so just measure the depth you want from the point of your from the point of your cutting edge half an inch up from the bottom everything's set so here we go so we're going to go right through the dovetail and work from the nose to the tail end like this and this will go very quickly because it's not very deep And oak is a very easy wood usually to plow. Get your body lined up, get your arm lined up. And don't forget this fellow here, a little bit of oil on the underside of the sole, the fence and the depth shoe. All the way down. So that was simple. I'd usually do the other one at the same time while it's in the vise, but just for now we'll move on to this one. 
Now we don't have very much to clamp onto here because we only have the pins, I think. I can just get on two pins maybe. I think. If I didn't, if I couldn't, I'd just put a block between the dovetails, probably. And what I'm gonna suggest is that either end, you start with the, either the clamp head, whichever one, near to the vice jaw, that will save it waggling around. And then move it along when you progress. This isn't, this doesn't give me a lot of security, but I think we're fine. So just go gently. Start at the nose again. tighter in at this end now. I got a little wiry grain here. If it was a lot worse I would have gone down with a knife. But certainly on the top face it's got a little bit of tearing on that top corner. And remember you can always go in after and you can plane the inside surface if you want to, but away from your dovetails, of course. This is gonna be fine. Almost there. My left hand is, my lateral pressure is pushing into the side, the end, the edge of the board, and that's it. So we're down. I've got the other two to do. Once I've done that, I can start fitting the panel in the same way that we did the door. So it'll be exactly the same. That three quarter inch in from the, from this outside edge, from the end, fitted to size first, of course, and then leave, you want to leave quarter of an inch on here and then you can fit that directly to each groove.
ました。